what's the difference between a behind the back drop and a behind the back wrap? A lot of people just call these both a behind the back dribble, but I like to separate them out because I think they're used in two different ways a lot of the times. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new videos, turn on the notifications, and if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments, or if you'd like to see any other videos, just let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see. So a behind the back wrap, and I have a complete five video series on this. If you wanna to learn to do this, just click down in the description. I go into complete detail on how to practice the behind the back wrap. But the behind the back wrap, would be a wrap. So I'd be wrapping it around my body. A behind the back drop is that, which is basically a behind the back crossover. Here's your front crossover, here's your behind the back drop. The real difference comes in when you want to use these. If I'm attacking in transition or going to the hoop and I don't want to break stride or stop but just need to change direction on the move, I'm going to want to use a behind the back wrap. So if I'm going here and she jumps me there, I can wrap and keep going without stopping. Now, a behind the back drop, I'm going to come to a stop. So now I'm not only changing direction. On the wrap, I changed direction, but I didn't change speed. I just kept going. On the drop, I'm going to change speed and direction, most likely, unless you make a double move. So a lot of times you'll see this used by guards when somebody kind of pops up out of nowhere. So maybe I'm coming in transition, nobody's really picked me up at wherever I'm at on the court, and then all of a sudden, here she comes, boom. And maybe she's going for that ball, or she's playing one side of my body really hard. I can just come to a stop and get rid of the ball, and now I can still read and see the court. All right, so I'm able to see the court. I have court vision because I'm under control. I stop, and now, depending on what she does, she'll probably relax, and that's where you put your change of direction, or you don't have to. So if I pop it over here, and she changes over here, now I can go between and go, behind, go by her with a behind the back drop, all right? Now if we went here, she jumps, she stays, then I could just go. Okay, so you gotta read the defender at that point. But the big difference is the behind the back wrap, you wanna use that when you do not wanna stop, you just wanna change direction. The behind the back drop buys you some time, it protects the basketball, it doesn't expose it because if she popped up here and I tried to cross her, maybe she's a longer, quicker defender and exposing that ball on the crossover, she might take it from me. If I go back here, I got my whole body to protect the basketball. Instead of exposing it out here to a better defender, I can bring it back here and I could even retreat dribble a little bit if I had to. She creeps at me, I could go right by her with a between or another cross. So let's take a look at some drills that you can do to practice your behind the back drop and your behind the back wrap. Don't miss your free workout, just click down in the description to get your free workout or right up here and I'll email it to you right away. All right, so here's a real easy way to work on some behind the back drops. Uh, like I said, down in the description is a link to my five part video series over behind the back wraps. Tons of detail on there, so just click that link if you want to learn more about the behind the back wrap. Also, the chicken fighting video on YouTube uh, that we have up shows you a great way to practice your behind the back drop against a live defender. So let's take a look at some behind the back drops. Keep your shoulders forward. There you go. The big mistakes players are gonna make, coaches, Here's how you help them out. So most kids, when they first start doing the behind the back drop, a lot of them are gonna lean back like this, okay? They're not going to have good body position, and that's the number one reason that they will struggle with doing the behind the back drop is because their body is just in terrible position. So you have to have your chest slightly forward, you gotta have your hips dropped, so that ball just goes right there. It's a very, small dribble, it's not up like that where I'm gonna lose the ball. Okay, so this is a position you pretty much should be playing in all the time. I got good weight distributed on my feet, my knees are bent, my hips are low, my chest is up, head is up, and I'm gonna dribble that right there. 
It's not standing up. That's where kids get in trouble. They'll start doing that sort of thing, and that's when they can't do it. So if you want to break the behind the back drop down to an elementary level and really get this a lot quicker, the first step is this to work on your body position. Get down here, all right? The next thing you can do is get low and just work on rolling that ball back and forth with your chest up and see everything. So now I'm getting in a good position. I'm really low and I'm starting to feel where that ball is. Now I just take it up and start dribbling it behind my back. And then as I get better, I'll go faster and harder with my dribble. Okay, and then when you come to a stop on this, same thing. You come to a two foot stop, bang. So as my feet hit on that stop, the ball's hitting the ground behind me at the same time. So it's very quick. It's very quick, the ball disappears. So I come here, feet hit, ball bounces behind me, and then it's right here. I can make a read, I can read the defender, I can see the defense, I got somebody open, I can get rid of that basketball. Okay, but that's the breakdown of the behind the back drop and how to get it right. Let's take a look at a few more rep outs. Those feet wide. There, there you go. You want those feet wide and low. You gotta be wide and low. So if you make a mistake in any dribbling drill, whether it's this one or anyone, you lose that ball, that's fine. That means you're challenging yourself, and if you never lose a basketball when you're doing dribbling drills, you're not pushing yourself hard enough and you're not going to get better. Now when you do lose a ball, you sprint after it and you get back right to where you made the mistake and jump back in and keep going.